Hello everybody, welcome to World Without Rule of Law. This is an unscripted moment. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a video that I made yesterday entitled EMP Series Goes to Magical YouTube Unicorn Land. And of course that was a satirical commentary on the censorship by YouTube of not only my channel but other channels, I guess the video was in response to what they were doing to my channel, but really if you look at it in the larger picture, there are many channels affected. And so first of all, um, they're demonetizing, now not my whole channel, but certain videos, it was 21 last time I looked. And so, um, Okay, so my EMP series, the new segment is titled Revolution, right? So yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff there um, that they don't like. I'm sure it comes up just in keywords. So censorship probably technically is not the right word. I, I believe it is a form of censorship, but they're not taking the videos down, banning them, blocking them, making them disappear, whatever they are only taking away my ability to earn money on them through ad revenue. So I think that is a form of censorship, but it, you know, I just wanted to clarify that they have not, at least to this point, been removing or blocking the material. Um, so if we look at the big picture, I look at these videos that they're demonetizing, obviously have subject matter that the internet gatekeepers, uh, i.e. YouTube, and I'm sure there's others, Facebook, uh, Google in general, any of these large leftist agenda pushing organizations, um, they deem what is appropriate for the internet and what is not. And so if they, in what control they have in this case, to demonetize them so I can't make money, maybe in the hopes that I'll just go away and stop doing it. So I listened to Daniel, God is my judge channel, the video he made. And in a way, he might have the solution in one aspect. And I'll, I'm going to just touch on it and I'll get back to it later. But he doesn't monetize his channel. And so therefore, and again, at least for now, he's allowed to speak about his conservative Judeo-Christian values. Uh, he's a gun owner. American Patriot, Christian, you know, all pretty conservative stuff, right? Exactly the opposite of what YouTube wants. But because he's approaching it from the point of view of, I don't care if I make a dime on it, I'm not in it at all, not one iota for the money, and I commend him for that, then he can still get his message out. He, Because, again, at least not to this point. Now, this could change at any time, but they haven't taken his stuff down. They haven't banned it, blocked it, whatever, removed it. They're just not, you know, he would have a problem monetizing some of it, as we're seeing with a lot of the gun channels, right? They're getting demonetized largely because that's not pro-leftist agenda, you know? And so that's a conservative political point of view in this so they they're doing what they can to to work against it so that's one aspect of it now from my point of view i'm just going to touch a little bit on my history for 24 years i have worked for the public school system in the town that i live in and everything that i say going forward about public education i've seen and know to be true in this district I also believe that it's, you know, it's a good picture of the public education system in the entire country. And there is no discipline. There is no responsibility. Now, we're at a place where students have absolutely no respect for anybody in authority. And a lot greater than at any other time in our history, I believe. Nobody is ever held accountable for anything they do. And so different people I work with, you know, there's a lot of frustration surrounding this. You can't discipline these kids. And so 
Oh, it's the teacher's fault. They turn their heads. Oh, it's the administration's fault. So if you follow the chain up, right, let's just try to do this, like follow the chain a little bit. Like the teachers are kind of in the trenches with the kids. So they're the first ones you can blame. Like, oh, they don't do anything for the kids. They just throw their hands up in the air, turn their backs and let them do whatever they want. Okay, so how many times do they bring these problems to, the, you know, try to discipline the kids, bring this to the administration and have the administration say, well, there's nothing we can do about it. And then, you know, then the kids are out bending the antenna on their cars and, you know, peeing on the hoods of their cars because they try to make trouble for them, right? So now you got these kids done it for you. So, like, how many times does a teacher do that before he or she throws her hands up in the air and gives up? Okay, that, that's point number one. Point number two is, okay, well, then it's the administrator's fault, right? Because they don't give them the support they need. Well, that that looks it looks that way, but then... If the administrator tries to discipline the kids, they have to answer to the parents, and in most cases, the parents' attorneys, because every kid comes with an attorney to school practically now. So how many times do they fight that losing battle before they get? So the world of public education has morphed into this twisted, fundamentally broken down thing that can, in my opinion, never be repaired. Well, maybe that's strong. Maybe it can be repaired. I don't think it's ever going to be repaired. So it is what it is, right? It's fundamentally broken at its core. Now, let's follow it up the chain one more level. And, and this is only my opinion. This, I don't, you know, there's... There probably is data. I'm not a scholar. I'm just telling you what I believe and what I, I know in my heart to be true. It stems from the brokenness of the family unit, which, again, in my opinion, started in 1964 when we removed Bibles from the schools. We decided at that point to go forth in this nation and to educate generations of children without the benefit of the word of God, without the benefit of any kind of morality or decency. And now, 40 years later, we've morphed into the society that whatever feels good is allowed. I mean, you don't have to be born, born a boy or a girl. You can wake up in the morning and decide what you want to be. You can, you know, I, and, and again, I don't want to go down this road. You all know, like, look around, look around the world, right? Look where we're going. A lot of this, and it manifests itself in these school systems, is because we do not include God and the Word of God in education. I firmly believe that. And anybody's entitled to their own opinion. I am not the Internet gatekeeper. And YouTube may be assuming that role. I will not assume that role. So if you disagree with me or if you disagree with my opinions or what I'm saying, that's okay. That's what makes intellectual discourse possible in a free world because you can have other values. You can voice them. You can leave them in comments here. I will not remove them. I will not do anything to them. If you are respectful in the way you speak, to me and to my audience here on this channel, you are free to leave your comments, whether they agree with me completely or disagree with me completely. Again, that is what fosters intellectual discourse. Now, <clears throat> YouTube doesn't want to operate that way. They want to control the narrative. And, they're, and so right now, again, it's in the form of demonetization. Could it come to a point where it could be just complete blocking or pulling of videos? I think it already is at that point with certain channels, right? I have 1,100 subscribers. They're not worried about me. They'll just demonetize me and try to get me to go away. If I had 11 million subscribers, well, maybe they would be taking harsher actions. I believe there are channels out there that they do it to. I don't know that for a fact. I just know what I hear, so I am not going to you know, speak to that. But let me now go back to... Continuing in my history, I've worked for this public school system for 24 years. In that time, I've had, you know, physical injuries. I've had my spine rebuilt. I have things going on. I'm not complaining about it. 
I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be thankful to God for each and every day, blessings that he gives me each and every day. So I'm not complaining about that. I'm just spelling this out. This is my case. I have physical disabilities. Now, after watching the knuckleheads that run the school system and the things that they do and the decisions they make, and again, I can't even begin to go into that here because it will turn into this huge long rant, and I don't want it to go there. Again, let me just say, the system of public education is fundamentally broken at its core. Do the research, look around, see it. It's true. So because of that, not only do I have physical disabilities, I have psychological and emotional disabilities as well because I come in every day for 24 years and I watch these knuckleheads and the stupidity that they operate with and it, I'm burnt out and burnt out and burnt out physically and burnt out emotionally and burnt out psychologically. So I want to retire. Next year, I'm 54 years old. Next year, I'm going to be 55. I can take an early pension. It's a very diminished pension. It's peanuts. The option is try to make it six more years till I'm 60. That, at this point, that seems like climbing Mount Everest to me because I was ready to go 10 years ago in my mind, right? So my wife and I bought a place in Virginia. We're trying to build a homestead. I want to go down there. I want to work toward self-sufficiency with my wife. I want to unplug from this crazy system that we live and operate in every day. You know, political, societal, educational, you name every aspect of it, there's issues with it. I want to get back to the old ways. I want to be self-sufficient. I want to try to grow my own food. I want to raise some animals. I want to do whatever. And listen, I realize to get there 100% is almost impossible. And I know that. I don't have any disillusions about it. I want to do what I can. But in that, I look at what my pension will be at that point, and it will not be enough to live on. So I have to find other forms of income on the homestead. And thanks to YouTube and to many people that are doing it and are sharing their knowledge and their information, there are ideas that I have to do that. Well, one of those ideas was to build a YouTube channel. And I had no disillusions that I was going to make $1,000 a month. If I could make $100, 200 300 a month, I would be happy. That would be a supplemental income. And then, you know, I want to grow blackberries. I want to, you know, have a, like a U-Pick blackberry operation. I want to do several other ideas I'm kicking around, right? All this stuff could add up together to diversify uh, to form a decent supplemental income to my small little measly pension. So that's the reason why I monetize my YouTube channel, because I had the hopes of building it into something that could be a very small income and, again, supplement the other stuff. So what do I do at this point? If they're demonetizing it anyway, I looked at other platforms. I'm still researching Vidme. I don't know if it's any different than YouTube. I could jump over to Vidme. I've started an account there. So I am on Vidme. I started it last night. I posted that one video. I'm going to try to do a little more stuff over there. But like, how do I know that that's not going to be any different, that that's going to be different than YouTube with the censorship and the demonetization? I don't know. I started something on Patreon. I try to give a value-added segment to the series called The Untold Edition. I've had very little success there. And if I've only been doing it a few months, I know it takes time, whatever. I don't look at that as a viable source of income. Again, so is income my number one goal to this channel? Probably not. I enjoy the writing. I like doing it. And it's a creative outlet. And, I, and so <clears throat> I would probably do it and will do it no matter what. At the same time, do I need to apologize that I want to make an income for my work? That's the free enterprise capitalistic system we live in. I don't apologize for it. It's honest work. Anybody that thinks writing and producing this story every single week is not work, you're mistaken. It is work. It, it happens to be work I enjoy. So does that mean I don't have the right to make money at it? 
So I'm not going to apologize for wanting to make money. I'm not going to apologize for monetizing my channel. That's a goal. As I said, I want to build it to a point where it's a supplemental income in my pension. But now, faced with the reality of the way YouTube, they, you know, and again, and I touched this on another video, there's channels that I follow that they have 60,000 subscribers. They went over to Patreon. They made a pretty decent little supplemental income for themselves. At 1,100 subscribers, it's I'm not in that demographic, so I understand that's my limitation. So so Patreon isn't you know viable. Will VidMe be viable for that? I don't see it being any different income wise in YouTube, or nor do I know that it will be any different as far as the demonetization, demonetization or the censorship. But I'm still looking into it. So where do I go? Where do I go with the channel? I, on one hand, I say, well, if I take the approach that Daniel, my friend Daniel, that Daniel got as my judge is taking, then I could just say, I don't care about the monetization. I just want to help spread or help share my Christian, Judeo-Christian, conservative, patriotic, political, societal views. And so I can do that and not make a dime. And will I be moving the country in the right direction? I'd like to think so, helping, right? I don't have any disillusions about the effect that I have on that process. But I think that if, if a lot of people take that little view to where they do that, then it'll end up being what it is. So that that's kind of where I was going with that. Like I, I can go that, that direction and just say I don't want that. You know, if I don't care about that income, it becomes easier now for me. On the other hand, if I want to try to have that income be a supplemental income, where do I go with the channel? What do I do? How do I grow it? Where do I move to? Because it's obvious that the direction YouTube's going in, if it continues to go that way, there is not going to be any income. It's already hardly anything, but my thought was that if I put in the work now for a year or two and continue to grow it, that maybe I could grow it into that little income. So, okay. That's basically it in a nutshell. So where does the channel go from here? Where does the video series go from here? The long and short answer is I don't know. But I'm going to still do it. I'm going to still produce it. I still enjoy it. It'll still be on YouTube every week until I find the answer, find the solution to these problems. As YouTube ramps up their censorship efforts, my my reaction and my plan may get more desperate. I may have to move and or I may have to shut it down or I might have to just bring it all over to Patreon and just deal with not making any money. But then again, if only 14 people are watching it, what's the sense of even doing it? So I guess I don't know. I don't I don't have the answers. But again, I want to thank everybody that watched that video. I want to thank everybody that gave me words of encouragement and support. I want to thank, I have a couple of good friends here on YouTube, uh, Finger Lakes Prepper, Daniel, God is my judge, and others. There's, you know, I think of Brother Chris, and I mean, I, I should have made a list and wrote them out because I don't I don't even want to, like, miss anybody. I, I value all my subscribers. I thank you all for your input, for your comments, again, for your words of encouragement. It means so much to me. To see that you know people enjoy the series and enjoy what I'm doing and so as long as I have that I'll probably continue to do it here and regardless of what the monetization issues are again my hopes would be that I could have some point grown it into a tiny income if that's not the case well that whatever I'll probably still do it so thank you all for watching thank you all for listening and again you're watching World Without Rule Law. This has been an unscripted moment. Thank you all. God bless you.